Past technical seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. So many look to the cloud today to address the many challenges facing ID. In general, they come down to a few, few key factors or reasons. We want to be able to save money based on a pay-as-you-go service that does not require a huge infrastructure investment. Or you want to improve your abilities. For example, think about the last time you set out to build a new application. How much time and effort was used just to get your development infrastructure up in place. These kinds of concerns certainly make using or thinking about using the cloud an advantage. So when we look for a definition of what is cloud computing, one way to look at it quite simply is a place to run your code. And it's a place to run your code to either save or make us money or again increase or improve our abilities. Again, things like scalability, marketability, our time to market. Recognize when we're talking about cloud computing, there are at least three different types or forms of cloud computing. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Infrastructure as a service is essentially a data center. All the hardware and software necessary to host your applications and data. FlexScale and Amazon Web Services are two often cited examples of IaaS. Platform as a Service, PaaS, is essentially IaaS++. In other words, a data center, all the hardware and software necessary to host your applications and data, plus a set of tools and an API in support of cloud-based application development. This is where Windows Azure comes in. Google App Engine is another example of PAAS. And then there's Software as a Service, SAAS. Package commercial software available over the internet in a pay-as-you-go model. Salesforce.com is the most often cited example of SAAS. Now let's switch our attention to Windows Azure. Windows Azure is actually a set of cloud technologies, each providing a set of services to application developers. We have Windows Azure itself. This is a Windows-based environment for running applications and storing persistent data on servers in Microsoft data centers. Your applications will actually reside in what's called the compute portion of Windows Azure. The data in storage now this storage is not SQL Server, not a relational database. We'll find in a little bit about the three different types of storage provided by Windows Azure. We also have SQL Azure. This is SQL Server running in the cloud. Or what we probably should say is almost SQL Server running in the cloud. In other words, this is SQL Server but with some limitations. So it is a relational database but not quite the same SQL Server 2008 you might find in your data centers. Lastly, we have Windows Azure App Fabric. App Fabric today provides two capabilities, or if you will, two functions. One is access control, if you will, security. And the other, a service bus, to provide connectivity either between applications in Azure environments or between applications that run on-premise or between applications in the cloud and on-premise. So Windows Azure is the hosting environment for your cloud-based services. A large group of machines, each potentially running a number of virtual machines, uh, with switches, load balancer, and more running in Microsoft data centers make up what is called the fabric. The Fabric provides your virtualized computation and storage platform. Computation will be in the form of two different types of applications or roles that you create, either web or worker roles. 
These will be described momentarily. Storage of data is in the form of blobs, tables, and queues. More on these also in a bit. Now the fabric and the applications and data that reside in it are monitored and controlled by the fabric controller. The fabric controller is the automated service management system that handles provisioning, geo distribution, and the entire life cycle of cloud-based services. In essence, the fabric controller acts as a kernel that you'd see in any other desktop OS. It communicates with a fabric agent running on each machine and is also aware of every application and the storage, which by the way, it just sees as another application in running in the fabric. It monitors running applications, manages the OS, for example, taking care of patches, decides where applications should run, trying to optimize hardware utilization, performs recovery whenever one of the systems fails, and does much, much more. And by the way, if you're interested, each virtual machine running in the fabric runs Windows Server 2008 Enterprise 64, along with a modified version of Hyper-V. With regard to computation, again, you'll create applications that consist of web and worker roles. For scalability, you will dictate to the Azure cloud environment how many copies or instances of each role you want to exist. Each instance runs on its own virtual machine within the fabric. For those roles that are exposed to outside traffic, web roles as shown here, for example, Azure also provides a load balancer to help spread the traffic amongst the instances that are running. And this is done automatically. Thus, Azure provides increased scalability by just dictating more instances of your compute roles. Again, there are two types of roles. Web roles, which typically provide the interface to end users. These are ASP.NET applications in typical cases that handle HTTP and HTTPS requests from users. By the way, to support this web role running on virtual machines in the cloud, each virtual machine that supports a web role includes IIS 7. Web roles should be stateless. In other words, any data that the web role needs should be stored in Azure Storage, which again includes tables, queues, and blobs. Worker roles, on the other hand, are not typically end user exposed. In fact, worker role instances initiate their own request for input. It can read messages from a queue, for example, or it can open connections with the outside world. Those roles, or I should say worker roles, do the data crunching work behind the scenes. In essence, worker roles are similar in nature to batch jobs or Windows services. While they can be communicated with directly, a good practice is to communicate with worker roles via that message queue again. Worker roles, in fact, are often set up to monitor the queue and to take their instructions from messages left in that queue. You can have as many web or worker roles as you desire in your Azure applications. Often the two types of roles work together to provide an entire application. Web roles communicate with the end user and queue up work for worker roles that process the request and then manage the data in the background. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.